We are ranking every single evolution inside Clash Royale from worst to best, starting off with the worst evolution in the entire game, the Ice Spirit. There are very little situations where the Evo Ice Spirit comes in clutch. You normally see the Evo Ice Spirit inside cycle decks, and honestly there's just a ton of better alternatives. On top of that, it's very hard to control where the Ice Spirit is going to jump. Your opponent can counter it super easily, and even if it jumps onto your tower, it's not a big deal. By far the worst evolution, but another very bad evolution is the Evo Goblin Bow. The Evolve Goblin Bow is normally played inside Spell Bait, and what this evolution does is it throws a second bow onto the opposite side of the arena. The issue with this evolution is most of the time, you know exactly what tower your opponent is attacking, so you know which one is the fake bow and you know which one is the real bow most of the time. It's a cool concept, it's just not very good. Another card I'm going to put in F tier is definitely the Evo Archers. Ever since they got nerfed, they just do not hit the same. They got a range nerf and this nerf actually made the card terrible. Before it could shoot across the river and hit defensive buildings, but now they can't. It's seen in very little decks at the moment and there are just better alternatives. Getting slightly better now with the Evo Barbarians and this one goes into the D tier. To be completely honest, there's not a lot of difference between the normal Barbarians and the Evo Barbarians. Now because they are a ground attacking troop and they are 5 elixir, it's kind of hard to fit them into a deck. So they're very much struggling to find their place in the meta and the evolution isn't great enough to where this drawback is worth it. Next up we have have the Evo Battle Ram. Now on paper this thing looks insane. It gains a charging ability which can push troops out the way, go through troops, and if it hits the tower and doesn't get destroyed it keeps bouncing against the tower. Afterwards it spawns two Evo Barbarians. Like I said, on paper this card seems insane. In reality this evolution is incredibly easy to stop. Stopping that charge effect is the main thing and once you do that with troops, a building, a spell, pretty much anything in the game, the evolution isn't that amazing. It is once again a two cycle so you're seeing it very rarely and it just doesn't have that game changing impact you're looking for. Next we have the Evo Royal Giant. When the Evolved Royal Giant fires, it does some area damage around itself and knockback. The big downside to the Evo RG is it doesn't hit air so it's very easily countered. On top of that the knockback isn't anything too crazy so even ground troops like Barbarians can hit the Evo RG. This is an evolution where if you had the normal version or the Evo version, you won't really notice too much of a difference. We are now moving up into the C tier with Wall Breakers. The Wall Breakers have a very similar problem to the Evo Battle Ram, where any building can just counter them. They are a two cycle evolution as well, so you are seeing them very rarely. And honestly, Wall Breakers only work in a few decks. As if that wasn't bad enough, even if the Evo Wall Breakers do connect to your tower, yeah, you take some extra damage, but it's not the end end of the world. Your tower is still very healthy afterwards and this is just a mid evolution that's why it's in the C tier. Moving on to the Evo Bats. Now the evolved bats can pop off. When they've gained that extra bonus health they become a bit scarier. They become like minions. However if your opponent is smart they know you have Evo Bats in cycle and they will just zap it away the moment they see them. I honestly feel like the Evo Bats should have some extra starting health just to survive a small spell and that would make them a very viable evolution but right now they are just mid. Just like the Evolve Goblin Cage. I love the Evo Cage. It is a fun, goofy, wacky evolution and that's what I love. However, it does have some downsides. So if a troop goes close to the Evo Cage, the Evo Cage will pull it in and then beat up that troop inside the cage. However, a ton of downsides is it can only take in one troop at a time. So if your opponent spams you, the Evo Cage isn't going to help. On top of being bad against swarms, it also cannot hit air, meaning any air cards, the cage is once again completely useless. And finally, if your opponent breaks the Evo Goblin Cage while it's beating up a troop, the troop will also be broken free. Like I said, a very cool concept, but there are just a ton of downsides, which makes it bad. Okay, this one's going to be controversial, but the Evo Mortar I'm putting in C tier. The Evolution Mortar is a good win condition, but the Evolution doesn't add anything too crazy. 
you get one goblin that goes onto the tower and that does a little bit of extra damage. However, it has the exact same downsides as the normal mortar, where you can very easily distract this card and make it pretty useless. I feel like if you play mortar, whether you have the evolution or not, it will not change the outcome of the game. Like everything, there are very specific situations where it might, but when we're looking for the best evolutions, we're going for an all-rounder. We are moving up to the B tier now with the Evo Goblin Giant. When the Evolved Goblin Giant gets below 50% health, it starts to spawn goblins. And honestly, this is a good evolution. It's very annoying to play against, and this definitely creates a big threat for your opponent. It's also a one cycle evolution, so it's very easy to get to, and when you combine it with spells like the Rage, it pops off big time. It's one of my favorite combos, and it's just so devastating. Moving on, we have the Evo Royal Recruits, one of the most annoying evolutions in the entire game. When you play the Evolve Royal Recruits, once they lose their shield, they start to charge towards the enemy tower. And honestly, this card's just very annoying because of that split lane pressure. A lot of players cannot handle the split lane pressure, and it gets even worse when they start to charge because then you have to react fast, you're panicked. I've lost games just because my opponent kept spamming recruits at the bridge, and it's one of the most frustrating losses because it's not like they're skillful, they just spammed recruits. Let's move on to the next evolution here, which is the Evo Valkyrie. Now when the Evo Valkyrie attacks, she does a tornado effect. This is insanely good on defense, keeping a ton of cards away from your tower. It's also viable in a ton of different decks, very similar to the Evo Knight, but from this point on, we are getting into the broken evolutions. If you pick any of these evolutions, you cannot go wrong. Starting off with the Evo Drill. This is a top tier evolution, even after the recent nerf, it's still super annoying to defend. A lot of the time it's a negative elixir trade and the fact the drill keeps submerging and popping up somewhere else is a very annoying win condition to play against. Moving on to the most hated card in the entire game, the Evo Firecracker. Now the reason why this card is so hated is because you can place it at the bridge and it can splash onto your tower, doing insane amounts of damage. It is a two cycle evolution but because it's so cheap, you'll get into this evolution very often, at least two to three times a game. And unless you're predicting this card at the bridge, it will most likely do damage to your tower. And that's why it's one of the most hated evolutions, but also one of the best. Moving on to the Evo Knight. The Evo Knight is just super tanky. In order to do real damage to this card, you have to stop it from moving. But when you're playing the Knight or this evolution, you're mostly playing it on defense and then you're using it as a counter attack. Air cards are useless against it because of that damage resistance. Spells are useless against it for that same reason, so your only option is to stop it with a ground troop. Also, this card can trick you. You think it's going to get taken out by the tower, it has like one hit point, and somehow it always gets a shot off. It is so annoying. The next card is the Evo Bomber. First of all, similar to the Evo Firecracker, it can hit your tower from the bridge, which is insanely annoying. A card having that long of a range is insane, and there's very little counterplay to that. Again, it's a cheap evolution, so it's very easy to get to, works in a wide variety of decks, and if the Evo Bomber is on your tower, it will actually double hit your tower. For a two elixir card, this does a little bit too much, and it can also survive small spells so you have to commit at least arrows or higher. Now we are moving into the S tier with the Evo Zap. Again, the versatility factor of this card, it works in so many different decks. It's very cheap, so you can get to it multiple times a game. Now, because when you use the Evo Zap, it comes in waves, you can actually use this to block an area very similar to a poison. I've hit so many predictions doing this just by playing my Evo Zap a bit earlier and letting the second or third wave hit the actual troops. Up next, we have the Evo Tesla, one of the best defensive buildings in the entire game. It can hit ground and air, it stuns troops, the pulse can actually take out swarms. And whenever I see an Evo Tesla, I just think to myself, okay, this push isn't going to break through, let's just reset. It's that good of a defensive card, it makes people just stop their push. Now, these last two evolutions were very hard to rank, but I am putting the Evo Skellies next. In terms of a game-changing evolution, 
evolution, the Evo Skellies are fantastic. This card can do some crazy weird chains, dodging spells and going onto your tower. And honestly, there's very little downside. Evo Skellies are played in a cycle deck where you're using skeletons anyway, and they are just a supercharged version which have the opportunity to pop off. People have won games because of just this evolution by itself, and it's insane for a support evolution. But the best evolution, in my opinion, is the Evo Wizard. It can hit ground and air, it has a shield around itself which really helps out against spells, and it's just super versatile, it's in a ton of different decks, it's only a one cycle evolution so you're playing it a lot, and here's the final list. Let me know your list in the comment section and subscribe for more.